to Budapest. Now I don't think we can be here in Hungary without talking about one of literature's most famous vampires, Dracula, who many people say Bram Stoker based on Vlad Tepes or Vlad the Impaler. And as legend would have it, he was kept here in Buddha Castle, the labyrinth underneath Buddha Castle by Matthias Corvinus um, way back when. Now, uh, Vlad uh, the Impaler, as you may have guessed from the name, not a great guy, big fan of torture. He did love to impale people, unsurprisingly, which was a very cruel method of torture, which basically involved putting a half sharpened stake up the bum or genitals of said uh, torturee and allowing them to slide down over it over a few days until it killed them. Pretty dark stuff. Um, legend has it that he once uh, basically did this to uh, 20,000 people, basically emptied a city of all its men, women and children and made a forest of his impaled victims. Now if you go to the more gruesome, I mean, yes, weird that there is more gruesome than that, more gruesome kind of ends of the stories. Some people also say he set up like a dinner table in this forest and basically ate his dinner there, um, really fancy style, uh, and dipped his bread in the blood of some of the impaled victims. And that may be where we get this vampiric connection from um, as well. Vlad also did a lot of other horrendous things. Um, at one point he went to a city, he basically rounded up all of the homeless, um, he invited them to a big hall he built specifically for this occasion, um, and he basically set out a lovely feast for them, um, and when they went inside, locked the doors and set the building on fire. Uh, pretty dark stuff. Um, he also um, used biological warfare. He was uh, quite smart in this way, um, if uh, inherently evil. Uh, so basically he took a bunch of syphilitic and diseased uh, people, got them to infiltrate um, an army that he was opposing and basically spread disease throughout their troops. Now, Karma did catch up with Vlad eventually and he was forced to face the might of the Turkish army. Lots of people say he died in battle. Some people say he was actually assassinated by one of his own soldiers before the battle even started. But either way, he met a very, quite literally, sticky end as his head was cut off from his corpse, placed in a big jar of honey to be preserved and sent to the Sultan as proof that he was dead. Now, I don't think that we can talk about vampires here in Hungary without talking about Vlad's female counterpart, the Countess of Blood, Elizabeth Bathory. Uh, Elizabeth Bathory was accused of murdering hundreds of women between 1590 and 1610 with the help of four of her servants. So Elizabeth had an interesting life, you might say. Um, she was basically raised around horrendous tortures um, and in fact as a young child saw a man uh, meet his fate by being sewn inside of a horse. Uh, apparently she quite liked this. Uh, she actually giggled at his head being the last thing out before he was sewn inside completely and writhed around until he was dead. So. Um, this might have been a precursor to what happened later on. There's also theories that Elizabeth Bathory had epilepsy and suffered from seizures as a child. Now, there's a very old medical practice that was around since Roman times where people used to take the blood of gladiators for various ailments and epilepsy is thought to be one of them. And they would take this blood and rub it into their skin to cure them, which again might be a clue as to what she got up to later on. So most of the people in Elizabeth's life seem to be just as screwed up as her. There are rumours that there were other serial killers in her family. Uh, her aunt Clara Bathory is often spoken about. Um, lots and lots of rumours that she actually smothered her second husband to death. Also that she was a bisexual witch who taught Elizabeth Bathory the dark arts. Uh, <laughs> which is quite an interesting um, theory. When she got married, she married a man who was known to be very vicious and sadistic. Um, they say that he would take the bodies of enemy soldiers and dance around with them and also use their heads to play football. Um, he apparently taught Elizabeth Bathory a lot of torture techniques, although there is some argument over that. Um, he basically did have a torture room built for her uh, to her specifications inside the castle and he showed her how to take young servant girls, smother them in honey, place them outside in the sun and let them get bitten and stung by insects. 
Some people think he was actually the reason that her torture never got out of control early on and he was actually the voice of reason stopping her from going into the full-blown crazy torturer that she later became because after his death is when things really started to ramp up. Now obviously she started by uh, torturing her young female servants and killing them and when she ran out of them she started abducting peasant girls and doing the same to those young girls as well. Now, because this was the Middle Ages, nobody really paid much attention when people were reporting their young peasant daughters going missing. And her forms of torture were very, very brutal indeed. She loved to stick pins under the fingernails of these young girls. She liked to take girls outside in the middle of winter, throw water over them and let them freeze. She also really loved to bite <laughs> chunks out of the flesh of young girls and sometimes would even chop out some flesh and make a girl cook it up and eat it really dark stuff. But the main theory of the kind of torture that Elizabeth Bathory has become famous for is that she used to bathe in the blood of virgin girls because she thought it would give her skin a youthful appearance, give her a variation of immortality. Um, lots of people doubt this theory is true because of the way that blood clots. However, people do say that if you um, die a traumatic death, your blood doesn't clot in the same way. So there is a slight chance that this could be completely true. This could even be something that she became aware of after murdering loads of these girls so brutally uh, and then took on. Maybe before she used to just rub it into her skin and then she realized, oh actually I could bathe in this, be a bit quicker, make sure we get every single... So this rampage went on for quite a long time. She killed apparently anywhere up to 650 young girls and when she ran out of servants and then ran out of peasant scales she actually set up an elocution school at her home to train young uh, noble women um, and started killing them and this is when people started to take notice when these noble girls were going missing she got investigated now she was found guilty of these crimes the poor servants who were helping her were all either executed or placed in prison for life she was not executed she was actually placed under house arrest bricked up in one of her castles with a little slot to put food and water through and she remained there until the end of her days now there is a theory that she did not actually commit any of these crimes whatsoever that she could have even been trying to help young girls by performing medical treatments on them but she was a woman with a lot of power, she had a lot of land, she was so rich that the king owed her money, so she was falsely accused so that he didn't have to pay her back. Um, they could take this woman, uh, which they didn't like having so much power, um, out of action, and they could get a hold of her wealth and lands. Her family had also had a lot of power for a very long time, so they'd been in the crosshairs for a long time because people did want to get a hold of their property and things like that. Um, but I guess we will never really know the whole truth.